And acute kidney failure, also called acute kidney injury, is that sudden short-term loss of kidney function, but if not stopped or reversed, it can lead to chronic renal failure. So a Kaplan question asks about acute kidney injury. What is the correct understanding? And the answer is sudden loss of kidney function due to loss of renal system circulation or glomerular or tubular damage. So what's really going on in the body? For pathophysiology and causes, let's cover the acute kidney failure first. In acute kidney failure, it can result from three types. We have pre-renal that decrease blood flow to the kidney. So the memory trick we use is think of decreasing of pre-fusion with pre-renal. And then next is intrarenal that damage inside the renal. Think in the renal for intrarenal. And if the cause is after the renal, that's post-renal. So just think post for past renal. Now let's dig into the specifics here. So for pre-renal, just think of that decreased perfusion for pre-renal. Oxygen-rich blood flow can't get to the kidneys. This decreased blood flow means decreased oxygen. So remember, oxygen is the money of the body. No money, no honey. No oxygen and the body goes broke and dies. Kind of like the kidney is suffocating to death. Now, this is typically caused by obstruction or vessel occlusion, where we have a blockage of blood flow, which blocks oxygen. Now, this is typically from an emboli or a blood clot or even a tumor that blocks perfusion into the kidneys. Another cause is from low blood pressure, that low perfusion with pre-renal. Like patients with shock, hypovolemia from that major blood loss or volume loss resulting in dehydration which results in decreased MAP, that mean arterial pressure. You liked that, did you? Well, click here and get access to over a thousand fun visual videos, 300 study guide cheat sheets, and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Neatly organized in our new app. Click here to get started for free. Fancy words for low blood pressure, meaning low perfusion, less than 65 MAP, or mean arterial pressure. Lastly, low cardiac output, we get low perfusion. So just think low cardiac output means low oxygen put out of the heart, resulting in low perfusion to the kidneys, typically from when the heart can't pump correctly, which decreases blood being pumped out of the heart. So we see this with ECG dysrhythmias, with those funky beats, and even clients in heart failure, which is a little bit tricky, so listen close. Even though we may have high blood pressure with heart failure clients, the big problem is low cardiac output. We get low volume of oxygen-rich blood out of the heart. This results in less perfusion and less oxygen to the kidneys. Next, we have intrarenal, that direct damage inside the kidney itself. Again, think intrarenal for inside the renal. Now, this is far more serious because it's more intense with intrarenal. Now, it's also referred to as ATN, acute tubular necrosis. So just think ATN requires immediate attention. Now, typically it's caused from infections resulting from glomerular nephritis or even autoimmune diseases like lupus where the body attacks itself resulting in nephrotic syndrome, which we cover both in a separate video. But really the most tested top two causes for exams, write these down, is CT contrast dye, like with a heart cath. So just remember, contrast kills the kidneys. And even antibiotics ending in myosin, like vancomycin and gentamicin. So just think, it's a sin to give a myosin, since it's so damaging to the kidneys. Lastly, untreated infections, and even long-term use of NSAIDs like naproxen, ibuprofen, and even Ketorolac can cause damage to the kidneys. It's kind of like overloading two delicate washing machines with thick cement. We literally clog the kidneys here with these medications, and in results, the creatinine lab value shoots up sky high. So the key number to know is creatinine over 1.3 is bad kidney. And the memory trick we use, just think of the three C's. Creatinine is the most critical lab value, 
since it shows clogging of the kidneys. And last but not least, we have post-renal. Just think past the renals. There's a renal blockage after the kidneys, which basically blocks the outflow of urine, so urine can't get out of the kidney itself, causing a lot of pressure, pain, and strain on the renals. Like with clients with renal calculi, aka those kidney stones, or even a tumor, or even BPH, that benign prostatic hyperplasia. We see a big swollen prostate in our older men populations. So just think the memory trick, BPH as a big prostate that holds back urine, and now we have an outflow problem. As far as assessment findings, these are pretty simple. So remember from our anatomy video, what are the three waste products that the kidneys filter? Well, remember we use our acronym HUC, H-U-C, since the kidneys sort of kind of look like a pirate hook. H is for hydrogen ions, which are very acidic, U is for urea, and C is for creatinine. So the key numbers to know is creatinine over 1.3 is bad kidney, BUN over 20 is very bad, urine output 30 mLs per hour or less means the kidneys are in distress, and metabolic acidosis is pH below 7.35. This is typically due to the retention of all those hydrogen ions, which pushes the body into an acidotic state. Now, Kaplan had a question about this, asking, what is the best indicator for good renal function? And the answer is 1,500 milliliters of urine in 24 hours. Remember here, urine output 30 mLs per hour or less means the kidneys are in distress. So 1,500 is very, very good in 24 hours. Now, this next part is not a big focus on the NCLEX, but it may show up on your nursing exams. The four phases of acute renal failure. So, number one is the onset of injury, known as initiation, which is not typically tested. Step number two is the oliguric phase. Now, this one is key to know. So, just think of the O's in oliguric as O for low urine output. Less than 400 mLs in 24 hours. Remember, Urine output 30 mLs per hour or less means the kidneys are in distress. So 400 mLs in 24 hours, wow, that is really, really low. And just think very sticky, thick urine, we get specific gravity that is high. So the memory trick we use is if urine is dry, then the specific gravity is high. Now the third phase is the diurese phase, also called the polyuric phase. So just think diurese, D for draining urine, a dramatically high urine output, like 3 to 6 liters per day. The kidneys are basically trying to flush out the problem. So very low liquid urine with a specific gravity that is low. The last phase is the recovery phase. So just think R for really slow recovery, since it can take up to one year to fully recover. And the key numbers are returning to normal during this phase. Now, a HESI scenario asked, oliguric phase of acute renal failure, some key findings. And the answer is anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and key term here, decreased urinary output. So just think low urinary output with oliguric phase. Now, the treatments are pretty simple here. The main goal is to prevent major kidney damage. And we do this by flushing the kidneys with a fluid bolus or diuretics. We're basically trying to push the kidneys from oliguric phase into the diuresis phase. So Hesse mentions, a patient reports a loss of appetite, severe headache and lethargy, and dry mucous membranes with key terms here, urinary output 300 mLs in 24 hours, that is really, really low, elevated blood urea nitrogen, that BUN, and serum creatinine. So the answer is to treat with furosemide. Now, if you didn't know, furosemide is a diuretic that pushes the kidneys into the diuresis phase. So just think, furosemide ends in "-ide", so the body is dried from diuresing all that fluid from the body and into the potty. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.